Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Soon. Today, we're going to be solving absolute value equations. Let's get into it. So an absolute value equation is an equation where you have literally just these absolute value bars and it equaling to hopefully a number, but we're going to go through a variety of different situations to see what it looks like. And when you're solving these, it's really actually quite simple, provided the absolute value bars are like all you have on the left side or the right side of the equal sign, and they're isolated. If they are, then great. You will just literally set x plus 3 equal to 2, a positive 2, and x plus 3 equals negative 2. And you're just going to solve both of those. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract 3 and get x is equal to negative 1 and subtract 3 and get x is equal to negative 5. And we get two answers most of the time for these problems like this. Now for all of these, you're supposed to check for something called an extraneous solution because absolute value bars can only produce a positive answer. So what you should do is plug in the negative one and you should plug in the negative five. However, big however, if you're smart and you think about every problem before you even begin, can the absolute value bars equal positive two? Yes, they absolutely can. If it equaled negative two, that'd be a red flag and actually tell you that this is probably no solution at all. So you should absolutely plug them in and we, we're gonna plug them in, but I wanna give you a heads up as when they're absolutely not gonna work right off the bat rather than plugging them in, because plugging them in, it just takes forever. It's so boring to plug these things in, like I'm doing now. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. It works out. Yay. If we plug in the negative 5 plus 3, the absolute value of that is, is 2, because you get negative 2, and the absolute value of any negative number spits out the positive answer, so the negative 5 works as well. That's how you're officially supposed to do it, Okay. You should just be on the lookout for problems that look like this. If we have P minus 7 in the absolute value bars equals negative 14, well, by all means, P minus 7, the absolute value of that might be able to equal negative 14. But if you think, can the absolute values ever equal a negative number? No, they always produce a positive number. So even if you were to solve this the right way, where you set P minus 7 equal to 14 and p minus 7 equal to negative 14, one positive, one negative. When you get your two answers, p equals 21 and p equals negative, no, not negative 21, p equals negative 7. If you plug those in, that's what we call an extraneous solution. It just doesn't work. You get 21 minus 7, which equals 14, not negative 14 like this is supposed to. So that, it just doesn't work. It's gone. And then you get negative 7 minus uh, 7, which you're like, oh, yay, negative 14. But the absolute value of negative 14 is, is not negative 14. It's positive 14. So this also doesn't work. And this would be a, considered a no solution type of problem. All right. But again, from the beginning, we could have known that because it equaled a negative number. Absolute values can never equal a negative number. If you knew that and you were thinking right from the beginning rather than just being a robot and going through the problems, if you think a little bit, you can save yourself a lot of time to be automatically no solution. Absolute values will never be negative. Bam, no solution. All right? So let's deal with a little bit of a more intricate problem. Let's say we have something like this where we have a... Let's get another sheet of paper. We have... A number in front, 4. Absolute value, 7 minus y. Minus 1 equals 11. Well, if you have a problem like this, you need to get the absolute value bars by themselves first. Forget the fact that it's a positive number. We need to figure out how to get these absolute value bars by themselves. So if you just pretend it isn't crazy, if you were solving for the absolute value, which is now my finger, like an x... That would be like 4x minus 1 equals 11. You could add 1 to both sides. Get 4 absolute value equals 12. And it's 7, mi 7 minus y. 
but you're pretending that that's just an X. Doesn't matter what that is. How do we get that finger part or the X by itself? Now it's all smudgy. Divide by four. Absolute value of seven minus Y equals three. And now it's isolated and equals three. Now it's a normal problem. Now you can set seven minus y equal to three and seven minus y equal to negative three because the absolute value bars are isolated. Solve both of those like normal. Subtract seven, subtract seven. Negative y equals negative four, which means y will equal a regular four. Subtract seven for the other one. Negative y equals negative 10, which means y will equal a regular 10. Now, I know I got on this rant about how absolute values can't be negative, but the answers for y can be negative. These are both positive, but if they were negative, that wouldn't be, it would be a red flag. Be careful, but it's not the end all be all. We should still plug in these answers. I would recommend plugging them into the easiest version of the equation, but the safest way is to plug it into the original. But this is still the same equation, so we can plug it into this one and save ourselves a little bit of time. If we plug in 4, 7 minus 4 is 3. Is the absolute value of 3 equal to 3? Yes, which means the 4 works. 7 minus 10 equals 3. Well, the absolute value of negative 3 is still equal to a positive 3, so this one also works. Normally, they will work. All right? So, another scenario you might see yourself in is if you have an absolute value of, like, 2x plus 1 equals the absolute value of, let's say, 3x minus 4. And if this happens, hooray. You just pretend the absolute value bars don't exist at all. And you they just disappear, and you get 2x plus 1 equals 3x minus 4, and you solve normal. Not a big deal. I'm going to move the 2x to the right side because that would make me have a positive 1x, but you could move the 3x. 1 equals 1x minus 4. Add 4. Add 4. 5 equals 1x. So x equals 5. There is no positive and negative version of this because their absolute values are on both sides of the equal sign. All right? So, that's going to do it for this episode. If you're interested in an inequality video with absolute values, I'm probably planning on making that one shortly, and that makes them all the more difficult, because absolute values and inequalities with the greater than and less than symbols just make everything that much harder. But I would feel welcome to check out that video when it's made. Until next time, stay positive, and I will see everybody later. Bye.